Rated M for Mature. What's going on, people? Fame Entertainment here from TICGN.com. Welcome to episode 31 of the Double XP Podcast. Before we get the introductions rolling, I got to do a little bit of a uh, little bit of stuff. I let you guys know. Uh, so we are in August. This will be the last episode of the Double XP Podcast on the Tick Network in August. It, things will resume back in September. If you still want to watch the show, you can still catch it on iTunes, Podbean, and on my channel live but for the august you will not see it on the tick game network but uh other than that i do want to apologize for us being um pretty much all over the place over the last month us having to move shows count shows things like that and we're going to work hard to win you guys back we do apologize it's 100 percent my fault and i'm really thankful for my team for being uh, understanding onto what's going on with me and my personal life so with that being out of the way, if you guys are watching us live, watching us on Fit Game Network, Pie Bean on iTunes, thank you guys for rocking with us once again. Let's get these introductions rolling. We're gonna start with my light skinned it brother from somebody else's mother, Mr. Nicodemus X. We're brothers, we're happy, we're happy and, and we're singing, singing and we're colored. Dun, 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 dun. Give me a high five. Let me mute my mic. <laughs> Like we always do about this yeah, time. I'm just gonna leave this podcast now. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... What's happening, man? It's good to be back. We can be the king of indies himself. And yeah, let's get the thing popping. Mm -hmm. All right. Next up, we got my right hand. One man. Miss Tubi won herself. Mama Sita. Hey, y'all. It's Mama Sita. And I guess I'm kind of glad to be back on the uh on the, on the grid because i've been off the grid for a minute so uh it's nice to be back hanging with you guys and um glad to have miss ash and luca um with us tonight and our other hey. guest alex yeah girl 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 hey hey <laughs> we kind of go back we go back so yeah it's kind of special tonight <laughs> to have you on but this mama seat up where i promise to keep it classy and sometimes sassy and some people say a little bit um, we're assy sometimes, but you know what? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm gonna roll with it. I'm oh gonna roll God. with it. So yeah, <laughs> roll with it, girl. Roll with it. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? That um, that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, Just let it all out. Let it all. You can't help it. It's there. It's there. What you gonna do with it? What else you gonna do with it? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Oh, boy. We I didn't know this was really. a podcast. I heard myself. Yeah, it, it goes down. But uh, <laughs> the pre show should have told you that, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I get well. I, I wasn't paying attention in the pre-show, but this is going to be an interesting, oh, interesting night. <laughs> but uh, y'all already know what it is, Crunk Girl. What's happening? What's going on? What's happening, people out there? Uh, she girl, Crunk Girl, Seven Eleven. Uh, happy to be with y'all today. We got actually a nice little uh, nice lot of stuff to talk about, man. Games finna start coming back out again. Oh uh, man, it's it's a good time right now. A lot of stuff is dropping. So yeah, let's, let's talk about some of these games. And we do have two guests tonight. First up, the lovely Miss Luca. Please introduce yourself. Let people know where they can find you, ma'am. Hello, my name is Luca, also known as the Ash and Luca on Twitter. Uh, you can mostly find me on Twitter. I also am on this podcast called RDX on a Dealer Gaming's channel. And I do a podcast called Speak Podcast. It's not gaming related. It's more like real life stuff. So that's really cool. Happy to be on. I'm looking forward to the show tonight. Mama Sita, you know you're my girl, though. That's, like, you know, that's girl. right, girl. I'm looking, for, right. I'm looking for the show tonight. All right. We can do that, girl. We can roll with that. <laughs> and if you ever feel the need to be on your back, you can always be sent to Suplex City. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Yes. Uh, I am apparently the mayor of Suplex City. Um, I am part of the Press Start podcast. Uh, oh no, it's Alex with two X's. Uh, my YouTube channel mostly consists of uh, video game discussions, uh, weightlifting discussions, and living with ADD and ADHD. So there's a lot of topics here to talk. And press our podcast is on Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. Nice. I hope you guys uh, check out everyone on the panel tonight. Definitely make sure you guys go and check out our guests. Now, before we get with the heavy hitting topics, I do want to ask the panel, 
what exactly are you guys playing at the moment? We're gonna start with uh, Mr. Nicodemus X. What are you playing, my brother? Wait a uh, I'm crunk. Um, yeah. Oh, I got crunk. What you mean? Oh, okay. Oh, I said something. I said something. <laughs> Nick, what you playing, brother? Uh, yeah, I've been playing a few things. Um, mainly, I've been playing Sundered, uh, which just came out. Well, I've been playing before it came out. So I think it came out this week. But I've been playing Sundered. Man, I've been kicking my ass, man. Like, you, you really got to grind and upgrade in this game in order to progress. So that's what I'm working on that one. Uh, I've been playing the PS Plus games. I just downloaded the Assassin's Creed Just Cause 3 and this game called Downwell. I was just playing that just a few minutes ago. Um, it's pretty cool. It's a little indie game. It was on PC, I think, like a year ago. Uh, we finally got it on PS4, and I, I, I'm taking it out. It's, it's okay. It's roguelite, which I don't like. So, like, when you freaking die, you got to start from the beginning. I hate that shit. But um, other than that, it's pretty fun. And then also, I've been playing Super Cloud Built, um, which is another PC game. came to PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, it's like a freaking, um, what do they call it, parkour type of game. You got a uh, you got freaking jetpack and all that good stuff. Um, uh, Bane, you know about that, right? You, you yes, got sir. it. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's pretty fun, really fast-paced game. But other than that, that's really about it, man. Um, I haven't touched my Xbox in a minute. I need to get back on Worry. Honestly, I've been thinking about. It. I think about it like almost every day. I need to get on there with y'all this weekend, though. Um, that's what's up. We can, we can get we can get that going, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to know when you gonna finish when you will finish Horizon Zero Dawn, Nicodemus. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I really don't know. He's probably I, ain't finishing no games. Yo, well, I, thought, I haven't yo, finished it either, yo, I, but I'm just I, surprised that he I, has it. I thought about it. I thought about that too, man. It's just like it just doesn't pique my interest right now. I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, so, that's so disrespectful. You got to always uh, beat games on your time, man. Sometimes yeah. I buy a game this year, it might not beat it till next year. I, I put it down and pick it back up. Yeah, I'm, I'm the show. same way. Yeah. I'm just surprised what her yeah. rise is. I know. And, and that game, that game that honestly, now, you're right. That game, honestly, is my type of game, but I don't know. It's just like I'm all over the place right now, and I can't commit. <laughs> I want to get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've been a, like a real gaming whore right now. I can't Ooh. commit to the wrong game. You know what I'm saying? Nasty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I guess. Look, Come look on, I did not sign up nasty. for this. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes, you did. Sit your Cuban ass down. I did not sign up for this. Yeah. Cuban Bond will not have this insanity on here. <laughs> so that's where I'm at right now in my life. <laughs> Mama Cena, what, I don't even been off the grid, but uh, what you what you been playing? Oh, wow. Well, you know, I've been backlogging everything pretty much. Uh, playing games on Xbox that I've already played on PlayStation, like Dying Light and Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, I played Path of Exile, the beta. That's such a good game. And um, yeah, yeah. It's so good. It's um, you know, that's that's where I put store I'm at right now. So now yeah. I don't know I don't know why I'm even asking because I know she's playing Persona Five, but uh Crown Girl, what you playing? <laughs> you wanna know what? I haven't been playing Persona Five. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. I took I've had to put it down because you know uh I got a hundred and almost fifty hours. I'm only at the last boss, like the the last boss of the game, and he is open my head. So you mm. gotta put that joint down. <laughs> I put that joint down. I think it was it last week, and I ain't picked it back up since. So like I'll pick it back up sooner or later. I'm only like the last boss of the, the dang on game. So it'll, okay. it'll get beat eventually. It's just you know how it goes sometimes. You gotta put it down and then pick it back up and beat it in like a day. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, uh, Persona Five, of course, hundred and. 50, 160 hours in. Almost. Ooh. Might as well say I'm done with the game. I just got to beat the last boss. Um, I beat Battlefield mm -hmm. One campaign. I went back and beat that. Um, I beat For Honor's campaign. Uh, was it two days ago? Um, I finally beat that campaign. I actually th uh like the uh campaign. The the story wasn't shit, but the actual like fighting and stuff like that was pretty cool. Um, For Honor's a really good game. So. Um, if you like a technical game, something that's not easy, that's kind of hard to learn, but you get gratification out of killing people, that's a really good game. Mm. Okay. Um, Does anybody play Fortnite? No, I, I mm. heard it. I heard it was okay. I'll but, play it when it's free to play. Yeah, I'm not. Facts, dude. I'm, I'm not paying forty dollars for a beta. Yeah, it's not beta. Happening. There's a lot of games that should be free to play that aren't. I'm not paying for that. Uh, mm. what else have I been playing? I've been playing <laughs> oh, I've been playing um Sticks, Masters of Shadows. Oh, okay, okay, I see you. 
Um, and I just started until dawn last night. Now you liking okay. sticks? It's fun actually. It's hard because I'm playing on the hard mode, so it's hard. <laughs> it, it's um, definitely a B tier game. Hmm. It's pretty good. I mean, it was free on. And I'm okay with B tier because some B tier games, you know. Oh, that's mm-hmm. that's no, there's nothing wrong with B tier games. Yeah. But that's, I mean, when when you say like it's a B tier game, that's exactly what it is. Like, okay. there's some little quirks with it that are a little weird, but besides that, it's a solid game. Yeah, it's a pretty good game. Okay, okay. Uh, I think yeah, and I started until dawn. So until dawn, I'm like ten minutes into the game. So okay, okay. Miss Luca, what are you playing, man? All right, so. Well, uh, I've been playing Bloodborne again, going through the campaign another time. Uh, me and my friend are going through uh, the DLC for that. And then I'm playing Dark Souls 3 for the fifth time so far. Uh, second time on the Xbox, uh, three times on my PlayStation 4. And then um, I'm also playing some Injustice 2. Man, that game is lit. It's fire. Like, I, I don't even like fighting games, but that, that game's really good. So I've been going through that. Okay, Luca, tell me, what do you like about Bloodborne? I think it's really stylish. Like, I like the background and the setting, and the story is very, very good. Like, it's a really interesting story. It's not just like, it's not just a werewolf story, you know. See, I which don't is what hear they a lot pers- about the story. That's why I was asking, like, how do you like it? You, you, you're like one of the first I've heard really say the story is really good. Yeah, the story is phenomenal. It's Listen, I know like all the promotional images and stuff marketed it as a werewolf story, mm-hmm. but it's not. It's definitely not that. And I would say if you haven't played it yet, give it a chance because it's phenomenal. It's actually probably my favorite in the Souls series. Like I like it a lot more than any of the Dark Souls games. And I'm a huge okay. Dark Souls fan. So Okay, cool. Okay. Alex, my man, what are you playing right now, brother? So I just finished uh, Metro 2033 Redux on Ranger Mode. Um, that was really good. And I'm also playing uh, Soma. Uh, that's not so good. <laughs> um, I, I loved Amnesia the Dark Descent. I thought that was a phenomenal game. But when I'm playing Soma, I feel like how I felt during Amnesia, the machine for pigs, where there's nothing really threatening about the enemy that I'm facing. And there's no sense of urgency or a sense of tension in that game. Um, besides that, I'm working on fixing my N64 emulator to run on Steam. And I've got it pretty much solid. The only weird thing is, is that if I have the Steam controller on and then I turn the emulator on, it doesn't work. But it's a weird hiccup. But I've gotten Banjo-Kazooie, one of my favorite games, to run at 60 FPS. So I'm, I'm happy with that. That's fine. Okay. 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 Now, before we move on, um, I just want to say I, I've been playing a lot of Lawbreakers for the beta ended, and I just want to say this live on this podcast. Any other podcast can get this business from Tick when Lawbreakers come out. I'm talking. Oh, you think so? I'm talking Press Start, Weapon oh, Wheel, oh, RDX. Okay. Anybody well, can use the gift So, so, you, so you're the guy that didn't know about the Titan being able to throw down that mine. That's my first time playing the game, bro. That. I, hey, I appreciate you coming in. <laughs> I, I forget to learn again. I mean, you know I'm going to play on PC, so, I mean, if you want to come get this work. Hey, wait, oh, is there, there crossplay? I'm not sure, but if there was, I mean, I you wouldn't stand a chance, fam. Listen, any podcast can come get this work from Tick. Damn. We're challenging any and every podcast to Lawbreakers. I mean, um, if you if you yeah, want to come on and play a keyboard, I'm perfectly okay. fine giving you work. And if you want to jump on CSGO, Five on five, that's fine too. Let, let me build my PC and I come out. <laughs> that's crazy. So we're gonna move on to the uh, the first topic of today. Now that's uh, we all know the Xbox One X is coming out soon, and one of the biggest, I guess, marks you could say on the Xbox people saying it doesn't have as many games, especially compared to the PlayStation Four. We all know, in the, in the same breath, that Microsoft is one of the, if not the biggest company in the world. They have billions upon billions of dollars, but we all can see blatantly that Xbox does not have a blank check. We've heard over and over about uh, investments in first party studios, and we really and truly have not really seen that. So my question to you guys is, do you think that Microsoft 
is somewhat fearful of that, and that they may be they may be the reason why the Xbox brand has been held back because they're not giving them the funds we would think they'll be giving a division that's very very profitable for the company. Anybody <laughs> the funds the funds to be profitable. I I don't know if that's the case. I think maybe what they're doing with the Xbox brand is that they're marketing it as something more along the lines of what the Steam box was supposed to be. I don't know guys if you remember that at all. Mm, yeah, I remember that joint. <laughs> so if you ask me when I look at what the Xbox brand can do, I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to get as many people to play on Xbox, whether it be on PC, whether it be on the console. And what they're doing with the Xbox One X, I think shows that. They're trying to punch up in their in their bracket towards PC gaming. They're trying to combine a lot of things with Play Anywhere. They're spreading a lot of the love around. They're doing a lot of things where you can say, if I have a PC, I don't need to buy an Xbox One X. I can just buy the game through the Microsoft Windows Store and they can take my all my $60. Or people can say, I'm very scared of building a PC. Here's a $500 equivalent that I can play instead, and I'll use that as well. So I think what they're doing is instead of trying to just market the Xbox directly, I think they're trying to market the brand itself directly. And I think that's why it looks like they're not getting enough funds, but I think they're just putting funds in different places. Now, now let me ask you this, Alex. Since you, you primarily play on PC. Yeah. Do you think the Xbox Play Anywhere is hurting the Xbox brand at all? No, not at all. Okay. Because they're still getting sixty dollars. You know, if if, if are, I have a PC that's are capable, really actually supporting. Are they going out? Because last time I I heard like Gears Four was dead because no one really bought it on PC, and so that was like that. I thought that was the going trend. Hey, this games is there, but the community isn't really picking up and buying those games. There really isn't. You, the thing about it, when you look at it, you have to compete with Steam, right? When you're looking at something like that, you have to be able to show what is basically called a UVP or a unique value proposition. If you don't have a unique value of why I should buy on the Windows Store, then I'm not going to buy your product on the Windows Store. You know, if if the unique value is well, you get to play with you know people on Xbox. That's not enough. I mean, that's great if it's like you and me. That's a very slim case scenario. But well, if the unique value is you can't play it nowhere else on PC but on the Windows Store. People will say, well, if it's not on Steam, I won't buy it. And that's, and that's true for the case for a lot of things. That's why Origin has such a rough start, too. And Uplay is still a total nightmare. So when you look at it, what does Xbox have to do for people to say, this is better for me on the Windows platform than not? Because when you look at games like Rise, when you look at Dead Rising, when you look at um, what was the recent one that just came out recently for that was an Xbox exclusive that came to PC on Steam. Um, started with Quantum Break, excuse me. So when you look at Quantum Break, they all came to the Steam store. So what am I really going to look for? Should I just wait and hold out and you'll put it on Steam sooner or later? Or is there a really incentive for me to buy it on the Microsoft store? Now, if they were to go through and say, here are the problems that Steam is facing, here's how we're going to fix those problems that Steam won't fix, then you're going to start pulling people over to that platform. But if they don't do that, if they don't fix the issues that Steam has, then they're not going to win and they're not going to gain that dollar how do you see cross play though because uh coming into uh you know w with that i mean i know right now i don't think that uwp that has really been fully determined as of mm -hmm. yet like where that where that's actually going to go but with microsoft's vision to obviously to unify the platforms and we know that a lot number of games are becoming uh, more and more, you know, with, uh, including crossplay, and I know that there's, you know, some advantages to PC gaming. Uh, but if the Xbox, excuse me, if the Xbox One X or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, we are enabling uh, at some point. I think the rumor is the keyboard and mouse is going to be enabled on the Xbox One and One X. So with that being uh, an additive, how do you see that as bringing value to? UWP and, and actually ban, buying your game as a, or being an incentive to purchase your game on the Windows Store. I'm, if you I'm can not... cross play with Xbox gamers and then Xbox gamers being able to use mouse and okay. keyboard. Okay, I, that's that's would be the first thing I would think of is can the people playing on console use mouse and keyboard? This is the first thing, right? And then think about like, it really depends how the game is developed as well because when you look at Halo Forge that's on the Windows Store, 
-hmm. we can play multiplayer matches on there on on the pc we can kind of like build like little team setups and play skirmishes and stuff there's nothing ranked or matchmaking but you can do it on the side the problem is the mouse and keyboard support for that game is terrible it's got a lot of um what i would call um reverse mouse acceleration toward the faster you move your mouse the slower the camera moves and that can be a problem so it forces you to play on the controller so i think things like that would really affect it i think when you're looking at if i like the really wonderful thing about that would be if let's say you know you and luca were playing on the xbox one x and i was like let's play gears together boom if, if I could play with you as keyboard and mouse and you can play on the controller, that's even better. You know, we, mm -hmm. It might be more advantageous for us, but still, that's a way for us to connect. The problem, though, is when I look at it from that point of view, I feel like I'm getting the better end of the deal, and the console player is not because now you guys are paying for online, mm. and I'm not. Yep. <laughs> right? So it there is, to me, there is a better advantage to saying, well, I'll just build a PC because now I can just get the frame rates that I want, I can get the resolution that I want compared to my budget, and I don't have to pay for online. You know, I may not get the games with gold, but I get Steam sales, and I get Windows Store sales, and I get all kinds of other stuff, and I can just do it that way. It takes a lot for people to come to that conclusion, though. It, it really does, it really it, does. And it's, it's, it's intimidating, like PC gaming is intimidating. Like I just myself just decided to start building a PC. Mm -hmm. I'm very intimidated by it. Uh, until I got with, uh, you know, some PC gamers that told me it's easy, you know, they yeah. were telling me all the things that you're saying and something like, okay, I'm gonna try it out. And also, I think like, as far as the cost and labor involved, people get very like, like, uh, I don't know, I don't know, if, you know, I can handle I think that. It's, I think it's very simple for someone to get very overwhelmed with a PC and say, I'm just gonna spend 1200 bucks. And they just drop 1200 bucks and not really know what they get and not really know how it's put together. And then things kind of start breaking apart, kind of acting weird, things like that. Mm -hmm. When you, there, but like to me, I never built a PC before this one, right? This was my first PC build and I've built other ones ever since. And I, it's, it's so incredibly simple and it's, there's so many guides out there. There's so many things that you can do. And to me, there's so many advantages to have that, Honestly, like the Xbox One X should have the ability for you to change resolutions. It should have the, abil the ability for you guys to change graphical settings. It should have the ability for you guys to dictate whether you want 60 FPS, 30 FPS, or anything else like that. Like it should have those options because- You're talking about the system itself? Or are you talking like, like every game should have that? Every game, every single game. Oh, okay, okay. Every agree, single game should have that option. Regardless of, of what platform you're on, it should have that option. Yeah, right? I agree with that. That is, that is something that it, to me is, being beholden to what the developer will dictate as what you will play to me is insane. It doesn't make any sense. You know, like we had this vision of, of 24 FPS on the order 1886. Well, no, 24 FPS plays like garbage and I wanted to be at 60. So I'm going to make it run at 60 because there's going to be a mod for it. Right. And then things like that. So it, there's always ways around things. And I think the problem that I have is that there aren't enough options in the console space for you guys to really get the full benefit. But when you're looking at like, what is the value of the Windows Store compared to like Steam or things like that, they don't have anything right now. Gotcha. You know, the, only, the only value that they could bring is that you can play with your Xbox friends. And that's just one. They need to be able to fix a lot of the issues that Steam has like with refunds policy, with support, with, um, with global currency, with things like that. Because right now they charge 60 euros and sixty dollars for a game on Steam. It's nuts. Mm. So a Steam sale happens, and that's when everybody buys it because the thing is, everybody in Europe is paying eighty to hundred dollars, or no, I'm not eighty. I'm sorry, that's wrong. Seventy to eighty dollars for a single game when we're paying sixty because it's still in, it's still in the same. There's no currency exchange. It's just sixty sixty, and that's that's kind of shitty. Mm. You know. So, so if you know what though. You, you're not the only one that I've heard. It's a lot of people that I know who are um, either multi-console owners and they play PC or just PC. Mm -hmm. and they have the same sentiment about that Windows store. I don't know what it, what it is about the Windows 10 store. It feels like a mobile store instead of a PC store. When you open it up, it feels like you're looking at it on an app on a phone. Mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest issues. Well, part of that is we have to remember that 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 Microsoft is actually, you know, their platform is mobile and yeah. there are games that I can't play on my surface on my tablet that I can take with me. I'm not necessarily 
obligated to play my game behind a desk and, and you know, and just, you know, I, I can I can be mobile in my game. And so I do believe that that was the vision and rather or not that vision is going to amount to much or be fruitful for them. But but that would explain why uh, you see that when you when you do go into storage, it does appear to be like a, a mobile app mm-hmm. because they, they try to make it touch friendly. Yeah. And, and then we know that Windows, Windows 8, uh, going back to Windows 8, trying to to bridge between tablet touch, touch and non-touch. So they've I mean, had their like issues with that. For Windows yeah. 10. That's, mm-hmm. that's a ex- perfect example of yeah. moving to touch. Yeah, which is and why so, Windows 10, we ended up with Windows 10, which was pretty much a, a perfect fusion, I think. Mm-hmm. Windows 10 is what Windows 8 should have been. Yeah. Let's um let's let's hear let's hear from Luca. I ain't heard from her in a minute. Um, do you think Microsoft is holding back the Xbox brand? What you thinking? I think that that's absolutely the case. Mm. Uh, Xbox lost this generation. It's clear that gap isn't getting any smaller. Honestly, I know people argue against it, but they lost, and there's nothing they can really do about it. I think that the Xbox division. I think they are content with where they're at. And they are trying these other avenues because it's like, well, we might as well try and make money from other places because we're not doing that for our hardware sales. That's just my opinion of it. Uh, I think that when you're getting your teeth kicked in, basically, with those sales, then, you know, you look to other avenues and you accept you accept the writing on the wall. and You say, OK, we lost this, but let's focus on other things to make this platform profitable. And it's it is profitable. But you know what though? I, I don't think Microsoft should do that. I think they should fight. You see, you didn't see Sony do that last generation. Oh, they I agree one hundred percent. But they fought to the last freaking year, like till yeah. twenty thirteen. Yeah, but Sony has a different demographic than Microsoft does. Sony's that's, brand, that's, PlayStation brand is worldwide though, uh Chrome. Still, Microsoft and Xbox isn't. They're more isolated to North America and maybe some parts of Europe, UK. They don't pretty, have the ground hole out, worldwide yeah. like Sony and PlayStation does. So I'm not necessarily saying that they shouldn't fight, but there still is, is a different demographic. It was easier for Sony to continue because their audience was still waiting for them. Microsoft doesn't have that audience uh, outside of the U.S. And, and Canada like Sony does and PlayStation does, and that's fact. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, I understand what y'all saying completely, but like from from a person who's been with Sony since PlayStation 1 and seen them at their highest and them at their lowest, I just feel like Microsoft can fight. I'm not giving up on Microsoft like some people are, even though I'm not even a Microsoft type of person like that. But I still like just the same thing with Nintendo and everybody. I want them to fight because I feel like you getting your teeth kicked in, maybe it's a good thing. You learn from it. You're getting you're getting features. You're getting things that maybe you wouldn't have not gotten if yeah. things hadn't happened. I agree with you 100. percent I'm saying know. that I'm saying that I believe that they've given up, but I don't want them to be like that. I want them to keep fighting. But this is what I'm viewing: the kumbaya stuff. They're very chill. They're very chill for people who are losing. And I mean, at the end of the day. They're still making tons of money, so who's actually losing, right? Right. But That's what exactly. I'm about to say. Are they really exactly. losing? Though? Are they really losing? Yeah. So exactly. I just, I just think, I just think they're content where they're at. You don't have and to be the winner to make money, and I, I think yeah. that's the you point. You just gotta cash that check. Yeah, yeah. But I know. Does that very well with iOS and iPhone? They are not the global leader, but they wait. They make way more money than. Google ever will with Android. Yeah, but we're talking about like um the Xbox division, right? So like it's a difference. I mean, it's not a difference, but like Microsoft is the one that No, it's has, not like, different. I'm talking about I'm making a comparison between yeah. a company not having to be number one and still be profitable. Yeah. That's the that's the uh problem. I get that. I get that. Microsoft is smart, they're gonna make sure they're profitable, like you guys said. Like if the console isn't selling well, they're gonna go into software and all that stuff. Let me ask you guys this. Do you guys think that it would ever become a case to where they will be a totally just software company, third party, like Sega went? Um, okay. if, if this generation doesn't do better as far as consoles go, if they see they're making more money in the gaming space, what's to keep them from like not making another console? Like really, realistically, what's what's going to keep they're them? They're not going anywhere. Microsoft, yeah, they're not. They're not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying they're going anywhere. I'm just saying like, what's to keep them from getting out the console? I mean, Xbox is, well. Xbox is still profitable, so I don't see why they would 
their ego consider and, doing that you know? everybody, unless they were like losing really badly that i just don't see that happening i think everybody's ego is too big for them to just walk out and leave like i ha you know how how long i've heard sony is going out of business and sony is doing like i kept telling people yo sony obviously their ego is not that big though because they kind of have settled like we said right no, so their I ego mean, ain't that big settling is different than just uh, it might not be it not, might be given up. It may not be given up. It may be, like the, the, best, it not may be the best option for them in their eyes. It may yeah. be the best strategy. If, if they were giving up per se, they wouldn't be making a. I, I think they wouldn't be making a one X. They wouldn't be pushing for all these new things. And it's it's. I don't. I don't. They're, they're not going anywhere. Yeah, even I don't though, think. Even I don't think your Microsoft is given up. I I think they may have. They they understand that globally. They may not make up a, a, the difference in those numbers like Sony did, but I think they understand on the home front that they can still close the gap on the home front and they can stay uh, they, they can stay as close on the home. I don't think they want to lose the home front, though, and, and even even losing it, leave, losing it by a, a really large margin, which is why we're having the services and, 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 and the games and things that they're trying to do, because I think their battlefront is at home. I just don't think it's globally though. But you think about Microsoft per se, like y'all were saying, like Sony has global and all that stuff. Last generation, they were doing pretty good globally and they were just getting their teeth kicked in in the US. And and, and it's, it's, it's kind of switched, like how everything is switched. Right, um, but Sony caught up they, from I, global yeah. sales, not 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 US sales though. I think, I think with the US sales, I didn't. I, I'm, I'm. It's crazy to think how, even though Microsoft is actually not doing bad, it's just that Sony is just doing way better than expected. Right, because behind in the U.S. sales is what they're about like what one point what two three million. Yeah, uh -huh. it's not crazy like amounts of numbers like, but you, the, right. The U.K. is really where my, where where Sony is killing it. Sony is killing in the U.K. That's where really where they're making their grounds at, like pushing the. The number four is the UK. Japan is uh so so. The, you know Japan really. Well, Japan is Nintendo territory now. Yeah, I'm about to say Japan, Japan, is, Japan belongs to the Switch. Yeah, That's like, Japan is mo It's the UK. That's really where Sony is like dominating in the in the forefront when it comes to like software and hardware. The UK they are killing it. I'm not sure about Sony's financials, but I I from what I've heard in passing. Correct me if I'm wrong. A lot of Sony's financials are because of the PlayStation, not yeah. because of their TV sales or anything else. No, so it's all PlayStation. All I feel PlayStation. like I feel like they're riding on that a lot more than a lot of other companies are compared to Microsoft. And Microsoft has Windows, Word, Office, right. all of other stuff where they have global contracts with other people, with other companies and corporations. So they're able to create much more revenue much faster than other companies are than just having a, a one trick pony. Um, that's that's a pun, by the way. Yeah, um, I got that. I got that. Yeah. Clever, <laughs> clever, clever, sir. <laughs> when you Validating stuff too, like they got rid of their computers, they got rid of yeah. their buildings, and but I I see a lot of where this is going. To be honest, I think in maybe the next, I would say ten to fifteen years, it won't be consoles at all. It'll just be an app on your TV, and it'll just be a service. Sony I'm service, like, Microsoft service. I, I think I think Microsoft will get there first. <laughs> I I definitely agree with that. They are talking about that. Surprised they if in ten to fifteen that. years you just turn on an app on your TV. And you just play your games there with a Bluetooth controller, put it up to your TV, and you're done. And you don't even have a box. They don't even have to charge you. They don't have to ship anything. They don't have to build anything. They save a ton of overhead, and they just make pure revenue. They're still going to charge us out the ass. I bet you They'll still charge you $60 a game. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. You don't, even, you don't even have a physical copy. $60 a game, and then they'll do. And I love to hear the arguments about resolution and frames and all that. That happens. <laughs> Uh, we'll look back and be like, what were we sitting here arguing over all this stupidity? Yeah, and, just uh, the fight, but then it'll just be ping time. You know, <laughs> exactly. Just Connection. It's just like when we argued about bits, like 16 bits. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, we always argue about something, and we're going to look back and be like, what were we talking about? Yeah, <laughs> my ping better than yours. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start opinion. posting speed test results <laughs> <laughs> instead of like, Screen like oh, I got to move to Kansas. I got to move to Kansas, guys. Push your download speeds. Be right no, back. Mine are terrible. I live in Florida. It's yes, coming to swamp. Is Fame back? I want to get his thoughts on it. Yes, sir. I I I am back. Um, me personally, I honestly and totally believe 
that Microsoft has gotten gun shot with Xbox, which which is is kind of sad because last generation the Xbox was selling amazing. It was the number one console. Everything we saw as far as marketing on TV was Xbox. It was Xbox, this Xbox that everywhere. And this generation, I think they had you know ambitions that weren't necessarily feasible or uh, things they they shouldn't have never thought about doing. And when games want to come out and they want to port it, you know, Sunset Overdrive, et cetera, they want to port it to the extent they thought they would be, they got gun shy. And they decided, you know what, I'm not going to continue to put money in something that they don't feel like they're getting the return, that return of what they of what they put in. So I, I honestly believe Microsoft is gun shy. And like Lucas said earlier, you know, I think somebody said as well, that's why they've gone to other avenues. Hey, let's try to do this and do that. And I honestly don't feel as if, you know, I'm not saying Xbox playing as a bad thing, but I don't feel like the X, uh, the PC community has really adapted to those um, games over there. So it's kind of you sort of diluted your brand for what? How 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 were the were the sales of Gears Four or Windows Ten PC worth you know your dilution of of your brand? I don't think uh, so. I don't think so either. Like no. I said, I, I'm not one of the ones that oh get get rid of Xbox playing away. I, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad people get to play. So I'm glad people folks get to play, you know, uh, Forza Horizon Three. I think that's freaking awesome. I think more people get to play this game. But at the same time, I think they're they were starting to grasp for straws and they went down this road. And I don't think this road has been as profitable for them as they wanted it to be. Uh, if you ask me, I will be perfectly fine because I'm not missing out on the games anyway. I'm perfectly fine if they started back making two Xbox exclusives again. Um. You will hope that people start supporting these games, but like I said, I, at the same time, I see why they went to PC because, yeah, I like I said, certain certain games aren't being supported. People, you know, are talking about them and hyping them up, but they're not actually going out and buying these games. Right. There's no reason why Sunset Overdrive is one of my favorite games of generation. Still, there's no reason why we should already be talking about a Sunset Overdrive. To the fact that that Insomniac says they're going to make Sunset Overdrive with or without Microsoft, they're waiting for Microsoft to call about Sunset Overdrive too. That shows you Microsoft is gun shy about funding that game because of the sales of the first one. The game even went to games with gold, and people still really weren't playing that game. Damn. And it's a and it's a fun game. It looks like it's fun. I mean, it's a Sony egg. I don't know about people weren't playing it when it went to games with gold thing. I don't know about that one because I think that's where people discovered Sunset Overdrive because you on my friends list and my 300 or some friends, and that may not be a lot. But I saw a lot of people playing that game, and I did see a lot of people on on social media asking where this game come came from, and people letting them know that this was a 2014 game. Okay, you just completely missed the boat. I fought Microsoft in this area, especially er earlier this gen. This gen, um, I, I I really fought them in marketing. I just think that they did not put their the money where they needed to put it when it came to putting these games in front of the Xbox community. And I get that there was a lot of backlash and a lot of stuff that they were, you know, they were up against, mm -hmm. but I still felt like the Sunset Overdrive, even Ori, and Ori did pretty, still did pretty good, but I still feel like these games should have been on television. They should have been in advertisements. They should have been everywhere. You should have marketed. You had a first party games from Already Sunset Overdrive. Quantum Break was maybe the may, Quantum Break, I think, was really the only game outside of Gears and Halo that was really given first party exclusive status treatment when it came to marketing. And mm -hmm. that's where I fought them at. They just did not support their games as far as marketing, putting them out in front of that game. Is that, even when the day one, when you wanted to buy the game, you go into the buy Sunset Overdrive, you didn't even see Sunset Overdrive as a lead in the game store on the Xbox until the next day why was that yeah That's the marketing the has been really bad yeah in general yeah i, I will say they're the the masters of some, marketing i don't understand that though they're they're gonna gonna get the they marketed the hell out of their games like i was getting pissed off at, at sony because they're marketing. yeah yeah right <laughs> i think microsoft will get a, a big right. marketing boost with this whole taco bell thing because taco bell got a commercial running every other commercial is ridiculous how many taco oh. bell commercials we see right so the I, taco think, bell thing. I think i think the taco bell thing will actually help far as put, let people know hey we do have a new console coming out 
Yeah, bro. I, mean, I think it's a I, sorry, Alex. Hold on. I think it's a start, but I think they need to be doing a lot more than just teaming up with Taco Bell. Like I was yeah, having a discussion with someone, and they're like, "Well, you know, it's a cheap, it's cheap, and you know, it's it'll be good and it'll work out." I'm like, "Yeah, that's the problem. It's cheap. Like, what? Like, are they gonna put any money behind um, backing this product? I, like, exactly. it's just dis it's disappointing to see. I feel like they could be doing more, but." They're not, and like I said, it's it's a start, but it's a cheap start, and I want to I want to see them do more. Their marketing needs to step it up. Yeah, I feel like with the Xbox One, especially, they were they had it, honestly. It, this is my opinion on it, but it was a burning trash fire from E3 reveal to up until recently, and Phil Spencer has had to do a lot of work to get the stigma of that E3 reveal out of a lot of people's mouths. Because it has been people that don't even play games were like, oh, yeah, it's always online, right? And people were like, no, dude, it's gone. And they're like, yeah, I don't, I don't care. I'm not dealing with that. <laughs> I'm over it. And that, <laughs> and that has really, really bit them in the ass, like continuously over and over. And it's, it's a shame to say because they had if, – if it wasn't for two specific things, if it wasn't for the pushing of Connect, and if it wasn't for them trying to push always online, the Xbox itself would be in a much different place because you're looking at – here is a $500 system with something that's shoehorned in that I don't want, which is Connect, and I have the potential of it being always online, and I can get the PS4, which doesn't have Connect. It's four, it's 100 bucks cheaper, and I can share my games. I'll just go there. I mean, the marketing did it for themselves for Sony. Let's be honest. Yeah, really. Talk. Microsoft had to really push that narrative for you, and they failed on it. Then they had to turn it around, right the ship, then try to fix it. So we can say they're marketing this or marketing that, but they had a massive uphill battle to even try and sell consoles in the beginning compared to the PS4 because they made a decision to not do what they should have done, which is be competitive. I think so they, do we say, will we say that the PlayStation won this generation or Microsoft lost it? They just so lost it. Honestly, I think Microsoft gave it to Sony. Because they had all the momentum coming from 7th Gen. They did. They had and, but you know what? I, but, we, but we can say the mm -hmm. same thing about the PS2 to PS3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? arrogance. Yeah. Uh, it's the arrogance. What were you going to say, Crunk Girl? No, I was going to say that I, I kind of believe that too. Uh, but also, got to realize as well, Sony's always slow in the, in the beginning of each generation. And they pick up towards the end. They do it every time. So they got a little head start. Yeah, Microsoft gave them a head start. And then yeah. now they're just pushing along, chugging along. Yeah, this is the time right now where PlayStation usually does pick it up. And since they had that big of a head start, they're just blowing it out the water right now. That's why you are see they, it like are, that. Are they, are they peaking, you think? You think Sony may be starting to peak? peak this year, soon? they started their peak. In, in as, my, as a peak? When it comes to, like, games and stuff like that, the, the first party and third party are starting to peak. and start I would say 2018 peak. will be their peak. Yeah, I don't think okay. it's pe it's peaking, but it's not at the peak because yeah, I, I think feel like this was peak. the year where a lot of the games that we were looking forward to finally are start were starting to drop. Um, and then uh, also the third the third and second uh, party joints that we usually deal with all the time are bringing back games that most of us enjoy that Sony fans enjoy. It might not be for everybody, but the games that we always want are coming over this way, so we're we're good. Now, now speak, speaking of speaking of games, uh, one of the games I'm really super hell excited for is Hellblade, and I know uh, Nick actually wanted to uh, take a little time and talk to you guys about um, about the game. A little bit of update going on with uh, Hellblade. So Nick, I want to give you the floor so you can you can uh, yeah yeah speed uh, on, sir. Yeah, Hellblade. Uh, a lot of people are hyped about and stuff like that, which is cool. Um, for those of you who don't know, Hellblade being developed or has been developed by Ninja Theory. Who brought us games like Devil May Cry? Uh, so everybody seems to be really hyped about it. A lot of talk and everything about it, but I just want to make sure everybody knows what they're getting into when they actually play Hellblade. Um, I think a lot of people think it may be some type of hack and slash game because you know Ninja Theory is known for doing games like that. Um, but this game right here is going to be heavily story driven. Um, you're playing as a main character who's struggling with like psychosis, which is a mental condition where a person sees visions, hears voices, and things like that. So you're really going to be playing inside the head of Senua. That's the main character's um, name. You're going to be playing inside the head of Senua. And it's, it, I've been watching the developer diaries, and it's crazy, like, the links they went to to actually um, bring psychosis to life in a video game. So I think a lot of people, they're either going to be really disappointed or pleasantly surprised 
Now there is combat in the game, um, as you see from the um, trailers and stuff like that. But that combat, I don't think it's going to be just the whole game. I don't think it's going to be like God of War or you know like Devil May Cry and nothing like that. I, I don't think it's going to be combat heavy. And I think people really need to be understanding that before they get hyped and then disappointed at this game. Um, one cool thing though is that they um, I hear an echo. I mean, I love I love the sound of my voice and everything, but I hear an echo. <laughs> <laughs> But no, well, another cool thing is that Ninja Theory is only charging thirty dollars for the game, um, and it's going to be digital only. That's a drawback to some gamers, but um, they're, they're cutting costs so that gamers won't have to uh, pay so much for the game, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I do want to make sure everybody understands. And me and Alice, we were talking beforehand. I wanted him to touch on this, on his opinion of the game live. But we were talking about it beforehand. You were saying, Alex, that you think the game may be a disappointment. Yeah, um, more than a success. Why? Why do you say that? Um, I I don't think it's because of the price. I think the price is just right. I think what's happening is the hype machine is definitely rolling behind this game. There's a lot of potential with it, but I think there are a lot of smoke and mirrors being shown. And I think things like the camera perspective may be an issue, especially if you're fighting enemies. I feel like it's going to be a very linear game. Uh, it, is. it definitely too. is. It definitely. I don't think they like 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 um like leading people astray with that. I don't think they're leading people astray. But I think they've been straightforward with the leading. I, I don't think people will be, will be prepared for something like that. That's something a, right about that I, angle, though. But but look yeah. though, I I think when it comes to linear games, I think we need linear games to to because it's so much it's so much like uh open world games. Right. But then I feel like. Uh, a linear game is is just what some some gamers need, man. To I know I need it. Yeah. Well, there's nothing really wrong with a <laughs> linear game, right? I'm, I'm not yeah. saying that in a negative way. What I'm saying when I mean linear is, is it feels very Final Fantasy 13, where it is a literal corridor. That's what it really it. feels like. I okay. I mean, I d I think we need to uh, wait and see a bit more of the game. Yeah. I mean, it's only listen. It's only thirty bucks. The dev said it's going to be eight or nine hours. I don't think anyone's going to be tricked or not understand what they're getting into like i'm not expecting a whole lot but i'm still mm -hmm. excited for the game i'm still going to pick it up day one I, I would say purchase with caution i just feel like ninja theory may not have had the best track record recently and m maybe it might not be everything that people are expecting although i do think that their use of psychosis is a great idea i feel like they may sort of sort of maybe bash you on the head with it a little bit too much and it may ruin a couple of things it's a very delicate subject to deal with especially in a game context that's why it's, it's important to know what you're getting into i think because yeah. well, they have like so many developer diaries i i don't know if other people do this but like when i'm interested in the game i actually research mm -hmm. it you know what i'm saying i actually go out there and see what the developers are bringing out and they have so many developer diaries so like if you watch that stuff You'll know what you're getting into, and you can make like a a, a a good decision as far as the purchase goes. You know what I'm saying? I think, mm -hmm. like you said, it will throw a lot of gamers that don't do that. They'll they'll think it's like you know open, more open world. They'll think it's uh, a hack and slash and all this other stuff, and then they'll might get disappointed in it. But I do want people to like, like really give the game a chance for what it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, what they want it to be, huh? Rather than what they want it to be, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, I think they have a a good uh. How can I say this? The, the the actual substance of the game, because like like uh Nick said, I watched the Dev Diaries too since the beginning, um, and I've watched a lot of them, and I was very interested in the psychosis, and like I've never seen that in a video game. Me neither, yo. <laughs> like this is freaking crazy. Like I I really I'm wondering how this is gonna work in a game, but I'm like I want to give them a chance because. We've never seen it before. It's something different. And I, that's yeah. what I want developers to do. Even if it doesn't work out per se, I at least give them a chance to try something different. And if it works, then you know what? We may see more games with this type of uh, stuff in it or something like it. Or, or people may not be afraid to try different things. Yeah. I like the idea of them exploring mental illness in video games. I think that's interesting. It's very interesting. Like, especially, like... If you watch the developer diaries, like this chick is crazy. <laughs> yeah, man. The, 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 the dynamic theme is creepy as hell. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else has a dynamic theme, but it is creepy as hell. Like it's, it's, it's a little wild I've seen it. And yeah. this is completely different from what Ninja Theory does. So I'm I'm excited because it's something different. 
So uh, another thing I want to hit on, uh, we do know that uh, PS, uh, PS4 Update 5.0 is coming around soon. Now, one thing that, one area that I think Microsoft and Xbox has been dominating Sony in, in besides custom controllers is features. Custom um, controls, really, fam? <laughs> Stop. Let me damage control, sir. Oh, yeah, please, please explain this. <laughs> <laughs> they've been they've been leading in custom custom controllers consoles and features i think microsoft is leading the way in consoles when it comes to features now uh ps4 update 5.0 is supposed to be coming around and one of the rumors is that we are finally going to get a uh, psn name changes so the question i want to ask the panel is number one do you care about psn name changes <laughs> yes or no and what would you actually want from this update because it's supposed to be big well, I'm going to say it like this. I don't believe that. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you want a new name, you're just going to have to start over, dog. I don't, you do it, She's like, it's not happening, fam. <laughs> We've been asking for that. Well, I ain't been asking for it because I'm glad I picked the name that, that I wanted. I've had that name since, like, shoot, 06. I've had the same name since 2006, so... I know what name I wanted, but for the jackasses who name like they're, they're just it's crazy with names, I'm sorry, buddy. I don't believe it. Until but nobody wants to be butt assassin 2K2 forever. Like people grow up out of that stuff. Very true. <laughs> but I mean, it is what it is. I've gotten used to it. Sony, I I don't believe that. I used uh, to have a lot of really inappropriate names when I played on Xbox. <laughs> so um, I think what I do want, um, I actually want um some more stuff for um. Share Factory. I, I think we need a, a Share Factory update. Even though they are, they always updating it. It's I, I love Share Factory. Um, and that's pretty much it for me. Uh, I, I'm content with what they've been giving me, to be honest with you, feature wise. But some things that I think would be kind of cool is uh with the uh, uh what is it? What Microsoft was doing with the uh when you buy digital or whatever, and you can return them or whatever. Oh, digital refunds? Yeah, digital refunds. I think Sony needs to start doing that. Um, they, they really need to get on the ball with that. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for me. Because most of the stuff that they've been bringing, I, I'm, I'm happy with for the most part. And maybe maybe um, 16, um, 16 player when it goes when it comes to party chat. They can maybe go up to like sixteen, but other than that, I'm I'm, I'm good. I'm I'm content. I'm fine with what what I got. Okay. Awesome. Luca? Yeah, I, I don't really be wanting all that crazy stuff. I'm I'm, I'm content. Do you care for name changes or or what do you actually want from this uh, new update, Luca? Yeah. Um. I would like to change my name just so I can keep it consistent with my Xbox uh, and my Twitter and all that stuff because uh, the name I have on my PlayStation is very different because I got my PlayStation before I got – I only got my Xbox like in October of last year. Mm. So I, I would like to keep it consistent. As for features, I, I like what I've been getting from my PlayStation. So I'm with Crunk Girl in this. I don't really need anything else except for those – like digital refunds would be dope, but I usually don't return games, so – me neither. I'm just saying this is something I think Xbox has and I think Sony should capitalize on. Absolutely. They need to have it. Yeah. And like I'm I'm with you on now, Luca, because my everything was this was across the board for me, except for my Xbox Live Game Attack. I, of course I had to make a new PSN, but mm -hmm. my Xbox Live Game Attack was insane Wayne 2K6. So I was happy that I had the option to go in and change it so everything is streamlined across the board. Yeah, I would I would like that. Um uh, yeah, I would like things to be consistent. That's that's about it. Okay, okay. Nicodemus. The king himself. The king himself. Mm -hmm. Do you believe the PSN name changes? Mm -hmm. And also, what do you want from this 5.0 update, sir? Yeah, um, believing in PSN name changes is like believing in Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny, man. Oh, it's wow. like, yes, it's not. <laughs> uh, it's, you don't believe in Santa Claus? Uh, hold your daughter's, hold your daughter's ears tight, but hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Santa Claus is fake. Um, nah, man, I don't think I don't think it's coming though. Um, but it'd be nice. Honestly, it would be nice to have. Um, me personally, I wouldn't change my name because 
I'm such a YouTube star that it needs to stay what it is right wow. now. Um, you know what I'm saying? It has to. It just has to at this point, guys. I'm just too big out here in these streets. Um, Don't matter know who you are. Please stop. 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 What, what happened at Denny's? Hey, let's not talk about Denny's now. Let's not talk about Denny's. You don't want to talk about Denny's. You're going to get Mama Cedar fired up again. Let's not talk about Denny's. Keep on yeah. talking, Nick. Keep on. I, I like when Mama gets fired up, though. But all right. Um, But as far as other features, uh, yeah, the digital refunds, that, that definitely would be nice because I do buy games digitally that, you know, I would like to refund. That would be dope. But other than that, really, I know Xbox has a lot of features and stuff. That are really cool, but for me, like I don't really have time to dibble and dabble and features and all this stuff when I'm on my system. I barely get time to play as it is, and when I get on my system, I just want to play games, honestly. So, you know, other than digital refunds and name changes, that's really the only thing I think they need, you know. So, what do you mean dibble and dab and features? One of the features they have is when you buy your games on your system and you invest in them, you get some money back. <laughs> yeah, well, biggest well, that's cool. I said it's cool. All right, then. I said it's cool. I said so, I was. Yeah. I said I was like that. You That's about? one of the main services on Xbox that my PlayStation don't have. That's cool. I, I, I gave them props. I gave them props. Now we need to get some games over there next, right? Mm. I got a lot of games. Me too. Oh, oh, oh Lord. Okay. I got a lot of games. Down there, rabbit hole, sir. You got some games in 2017, and then you want to holler Xbox. Get his ass, man. Get the heck nah, out of nah, here, nah, bro. Nah, Get the heck out of here. I had my PS4 since 2013. He and he in 2017, and then you want to talk indies. about games, games, games. having those exclusive indies for a while, okay? Get the heck out of They're here. not on the Xbox. <laughs> there are over 300 exclusive indie games on PS4, and there's only like 100 and some on the Xbox. Wait a okay? minute. So, so do you have 300 indie games? Do you own Step, your indie games? Or are you breaking my stuff you don't own, sir? Step your indie game up, okay? You don't know what I got over here. You don't know what I got over here, Sam. You don't know what I got over here, Sam. You don't know what I got over here, Don't worry about what's in my pocket. Don't worry about what's in my pocket. You understand? Don't worry about that. Don't worry about what's in my pocket. Don't worry about what's in my pocket. Don't worry about what's in my he got lit in his pocket, fam. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, Nick, you got that tampon in your pocket? I got a question though, but I don't know if it's on the topic. Um, have y'all checked out the PlayStation Plus and games for gold? Yeah, yeah, yeah. PlayStation Plus. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard from a lot of people. I know they was like, "Yo, Microsoft is not doing too good these past couple of months." Wait a minute, Slime Rancher has been getting great reviews. Uh, oh no, I'm not. I didn't say it, God. You, you, you got the deep voice when I said that. I was like, he uh, <laughs> 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 come out of the woodwork. Hold on, hold on, hold on now. <laughs> I've been. I know me, me included, and Nick was like, "Yo, Sony out here throwing out this trash." I don't know what's going on, but the last <laughs> four months of PlayStation Plus, they've been doing all right. Yeah, they've been doing all right. They finally doing all right. They finally doing all right. Well, they, they, that's because they're getting ready to raise the price on y'all ass again. Oh, oh shit. they better not. They, no, they better not. They better not go higher than Xbox Live. I'm a boy. They're they they gonna not. raise up high and say, "Well, it's because we added PS now to us. Now you gotta pay eighty uh -uh. dollars a year." Mm -hmm. Why? Hey Fame, they gonna add, they gonna hike the price on um um for PSN Plus, but then decrease the speeds. The download speeds on PSN. Yeah. And they're gonna, gonna go from twenty. If they do 20. add PS now, they need to add it at the same <laughs> price. Like they need to add it at the same mm -hmm. price. I mean, I ain't, I'm not gonna touch that trash, but you know. I but mean, I would it. play Nino Cooney, but because that's the because I'm not. I got. I'm not hooking my PS3 back up. And I, I, but I want to play. A, I wish they would remaster Nino Cooney. I don't want to play a regular version. I want the remastered version. Ah, <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm still hurt that they pushed my game back to January. <laughs> I they hope they do, though. I do. I do hope uh, they do allow uh, name changes, though. I know my PlayStation friends have been asking for that for a minute, so that'd be good if they bring that feature. And I, I personally, I'll be honest, I don't necessarily have any features that I'm on my PlayStation that it's like I have to have. I, I, I on my Xbox, Xbox is what it is. PlayStation is what it is. You know, I, I, I game on both systems. And I treat each system for what it is. I don't need those systems to be each other unless there's something that just absolutely works on one that I just feel like I have to have on the other. Other than that, you know, they 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 are, you know, they are what they are for, for what they do. I think PlayStation has been slow, but they're, they're getting there. Because I think, like, 
some of the joints that they do aren't big, but when they once they do like their huge updates, a lot of the stuff that we be asking for, they actually do put it in there. And one feature, to be honest, that I would that I would like on my Xbox, that's not on my Xbox, that's on the PlayStation, is SharePlay. Some type of SharePlay feature, I would like that on Xbox for real. Yeah, I've gotten my friends to actually buy games they wouldn't buy because of SharePlay. I need someone to stop trying to invest in PS now and just just go ahead and let us go ahead and get backwards compatibility popping and quit playing. Yeah, they invested way too much money in it, but I do agree with you with that. They now, 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 let me ask y'all this really fast. If for some reason, let's say, cause, you know, we, I, obviously everybody's cooping on PS now, so it can't be doing too well, right? Let's say they say, all right, now PS now is a part of PS Plus. How much extra month are you willing to pay? For PS Plus, if they added PS, no, none, none. I don't, I don't want it. I want no parts of it at all. It should be free. Yeah, exactly. It should be free. At sixty dollars a month, it should be free. With PlayStation Plus, I wouldn't mind maybe five extra dollars because most people that I know who have PlayStation Plus, man, they they good till like twenty twenty (laughs) two. Maybe maybe not the whole thing be free, but maybe just a couple of games like rotate in PS Now be free if they can't afford to do that. But I'm not paying more for PS now. No. Do y'all know anybody that uses PSN now? Jay Barry only. He's the only person that uses that. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 that's not true. I know some people who actually do play. No, Jay Barry the, the, the only person that uses it. He Jay Barry and two or three people on the console. That's it. <laughs> he does play PlayStation now, man. But I know some other people that do as well. No, four motherfuckers on the planet that use PS now. Stop. No, I'm so I'm dead ass serious. That's not. <laughs> Come on now. I know some people actually have tried. It's more than four MFs. Yeah, man, it's more than four. All right, five. Um, How many people on the council? Five MFs. Yes, yeah. Five people on the council. Ten, ten, y'all. Five. 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 <laughs> nah, but, but the only, the, I think the only issue with PlayStation now for people is because it's streaming. If it wasn't streaming, nobody would have a problem with PlayStation. And if they gave the option like Microsoft does where you can download the game. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. all they need to do. I would be on If you let me download it. No. The price is a little bit too high. Because the, yeah. the way Nick is, sh- is shitting on it, like, it's like, <laughs> completely. Like, the, I think the service is cool. It's just that the whole streaming thing is. That's what it is. That's what kills me. That's what I don't like. The streaming it. kills it. Like that's nothing. They that, that's not a price in the world that they could drop it down to to make me get it if, if it's still streaming games. And the thing is, even in this, even in the U.S., the internet is so terrible. Yep. And yes. there's so many data caps. Our it's it's isn't, unbelievable. It isn't good enough to stream the games. It's not. And it's it's basically. I mean, we we live in such a in such a country where we're so far apart and spread out that there's so many people that don't even have like good internet. And good internet meaning, like I have I have what eighty down and ten up, and that's not even good. But I'm paying like a hundred a month for it because of where I live. Yep. You sound so, like man. I'm in the country, so I'm like I'm like in South Carolina in a country town. Yeah. I have one provider for for cable and internet, so I'm paying like. 80 to 100. Yeah, that's what I'm paying. <laughs> so I'm and paying. I, I live in the swamp, so. Mm. So I, I, I got like 100 down, 5 up. Wow, I wish. Yeah. I wish <laughs> I had that. I'm just saying, but I'm really <laughs> not really even getting that because of why, you know, the PlayStation and Wi-Fi don't mix. No, they don't. <laughs> and no, like, don't. They don't. It's like 2.4 <laughs> gigahertz man. Yeah. The weirdest sure thing. Is. And the thing is, I don't even have the Pro. I still have the vanilla PS4. That 2.4 band in it. Trash. Yeah, man. But, 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 like I said before, I said again, if all my games are still looking good, I'm not buying no Pro. <laughs> I'm not, if, yeah. if, if I get games that look like Horizon, there is no need for me to get a Pro. Let's put that out there. Okay. Now we all gonna get ready to wrap out of here. I hate to sh- cut the podcast a little bit short, but we got some things coming up. Um, if you guys have noticed, uh, next Wednesday we will have a double XP special. Uh, we do have a debate coming up with uh, Jay Bari and Kid Smooth, so make sure you guys join us for that. Uh, we are back to our normal schedule. We are uh, bi-weekly, so every other Wednesday we'll be back with a regular show. But I said we do have a debate next Wednesday. Uh, there's also a debate happening tonight. Um, like an hour after this show, so make sure you guys come and check it out. You're not gonna want to miss it. Uh, let's get these outros going. I hear an echo. Lord have mercy. Uh, my light skin to the brother, Mr. Nicodemus X. Yeah, what's good, man? Um, thank you.
thanks so much to the chat, everybody who tuned in. Appreciate the, appreciate all you guys. Uh, make sure you hit that like button on the way out. We appreciate that. Uh, shout out to Luca and Alex, I guess. Great having you both on. Um, Thank you. you know what I'm saying? Come back anytime. Really oh, yeah. Thanks. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah I really appreciate y'all, y'all gracing us with y'all presence. Uh, but we out of here, man. This is Nicodemus, the king of indies himself. Make sure you check out my YouTube channel if you want some great content in general. But I, I mainly stick with, like, indie gaming and stuff like that. Um, no drama, no beef, no problems. You know what I'm saying? I just make money. Uh, all right. I'm out of here. And we got my right hand, one man, Miss Dirty Diana herself. Oh, Mama shoot. Lee. Oh, wow. Dirty you know, Diana! Oh, sorry. You know what? Let me, oh, let me, say, this, let me say this <laughs> to, uh, to Alex and, and to Luca. You know, it takes... Um, it takes some, a special type of personality to come on to the Double XP podcast and deal with Pony, <laughs> Pony, you know, Pony Demons. The king himself. Um, yeah. So I, I want to say, first of all, thanks to y'all for being able to deal with him for the day. I'm not that bad. Well, listen, okay, y'all know let's, what let's I deal real. with. So I Jack appreciate John y'all. Is on my podcast. So. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. Yeah, first of all. So let me say that. But y'all know that's my boy. Y'all know I just pick up. Yeah, that's my boy. Though. That's my boy. But just thank everybody for chiming in tonight and um, and having the team back together. And Crunk, as always, you know, girl, you're, you're, you're you know, listening to you tonight. Just kind of, you know, get my feels back with game and kind of getting back into the ground with y'all. I'm just looking forward to um, going with this. And um, other than that, y'all game on and keep it classic. All right, Crunk girl, what's that, man? What's happening, man? Um, thanks for having me as always. Uh, shouts out to the guests. Uh, my first time talking to both of y'all, but I've seen both of y'all before. So, dope. Um, shouts out to all the people in the chat. Um, y'all already know y'all can catch me at on Twitter at Crunker711. Like I said in the chat, since Black Planet, yeah, I've had the same name since Black Planet was popular. Wow, <laughs> oh, man. oh my god, Lord have mercy. I've had the same name. Profile. Planet, and you know that's what oh five. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> so that's why I'm like name change. Why? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, man. Um, thanks for having me as always. Um, I think we'll be what back two more weeks, and I think by that time uh, it's gonna be a lot of games starting to drop. August is gonna be. Uh, August is gonna drop a whole bunch of stuff. So. Um, looking forward to that. Oh, and, and shouts out to Kids Smooth NBA Live demo drops August uh, 11th. Mm, no, I'm, a, I'm actually gonna download that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna give it a shot too, but I gotta give a shout out to Kids Smooth because my man has been going to war on Twitter for NBA Live. Yeah, he, he's <laughs> a he's a fan of that. <laughs> two years. <laughs> and so we did have two guests tonight. We're gonna start with the beautiful Miss Luca. Once again, let the people know where they can find you, ma'am. Hey, I just want to say thank you so much for having me on tonight. It has been a blast. The panel is amazing. I'm so glad that you asked me to be on. Uh, you guys can find me at the Ash and Luca on Twitter, and I'll be posting links to the shows that I'm on on there. Cool. All right. What's up? That's what's up. And I got a bad back, so I'm so glad I was taking the Suplex City. Alex, <laughs> where can they find you, brother? You can find me at Oh No, It's Alex with two X's. My YouTube channel and my Twitter is the same. It's also the same on my Steam ID, so if you want to play some games there, you can. If you want to learn about video games, the business side, fitness, and anything else, let me know. See my videos, see my content. Mm, that's what's up. I need to check that okay. out. I need to check that out. Yeah. Right. I got a back workout routine to get you in shape, man. All right. I need to get a couple of bands. That's all you need, man. I need to get rid of this. Tell me your mind, dog. I'm just yeah. Yeah. I need to get with you, now. Yeah. yeah just, I mean, I mean okay, look, it, I do some really cringy shit in the beginning okay. of the videos, but that's okay. It's just cringy, right? It's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I need to get with that because everybody knows my stamina is off the chain, but I can get a little stronger, I guess. Yeah, yeah we know, out, we know that. We know you don't last long, Nicodemus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, Lord, have we know heard. that. <laughs> oh, no, we already know. We already know. We already know. We already know. Oh, my God. Stop crying. You already know I'll be going you all, all night long. Jump in and I'll, I, I, I'll definitely jump out. I'm not gonna lie, I'll jump out, but I come back, don't I? I feel like I, I feel like I, okay, I feel like I feel don't like there's some history here that we need to unpack. <laughs> I don't even know. I feel like there's history that we need to unpack. No, we, we can play Nack together. We can play Nack together. That's what we're yeah. Come on, Nick. Nick was also naked under his sheets playing the Witcher, but yeah. you know. <laughs> with the controller. That, that is 100 percent true, and I, I live stream just the same. I don't care. <laughs> 
So just, just a quick reminder, if you guys are listening or watching this on the Tick Game Network, this is the last episode we're having here until September. If you want to watch it live, you have to come to my channel. We will keep the show going, but it's the last one on the Tick Game Network until September. Also, another quick reminder, in 50 minutes, I will have a debate going up with Mr. Suplex City himself and Dealer Gaming. I know some people came into the chat thinking that this was it. This is not it. That debate starts in 50 minutes. Make sure you guys come back and check it out. Oh, okay. This is episode 31 of the Double XP Podcast, and we out. Peace. Bye. Bye. Peace.